Hi, I'm Bill Helms. Uh, I'm with uh, Minion Technologies Group, and uh, I'm going to rebuild, show you how to rebuild a, a coolant adapter from Dominion, a 625X9747. I have a print over here that I'm going to follow with some of the O-rings and some of the materials, purchase materials and stuff that are used on this uh, adapter. I have taken the liberty of going to the copy machine and blowing up uh, the list of uh, materials for the adapter this time. I have uh, a box of tools that I may need, some picks and files and screwdrivers over here. I have a couple of blocks I might have to set this up on. I usually use a bench when I'm doing this adapter so I can use air to uh, take a couple parts uh, off of it. Um, you need a well lit area, a um, little bit of space, got a few rags and a couple wrenches and some Allen wrenches. So uh, now I'll start by taking off the first three screws on the top. It's a relatively simple adapter. And the screws are all metric. I have a small Allen wrench in case small uh, crescent wrench in case the screws are tight. Ah, they seem to be pretty loose. I'll take these three out. <clears throat> There's no springs on this. So I'm not going to have to worry about the manifold shooting up on me. The only place it has springs are down located right here by the jaws. <clears throat> Once I get the screws off, the manifold separates pretty easy. You can see the wetness marks where the O-rings seal around the holes. I'll dump the screws out. Right here you have two different sizes and some high collar lock washers. You can see some of the O-rings here that I'm going to take off with a small pick that I have. They remove pretty easy. I'm going to set these right here off to the side. Now I'm going to loosen the socket head cap screws that are down in the bottom half of the adapter. These are a little bit tighter, so I'll use the crescent wrench. And I'll loosen them. They come out pretty easy. Then you just dump them down on the rag. They have lock washers and they're small M4 socketed cap screws. We'll set them off to the side there. Now you can see the top of the piston 
right here on the top. Now I can take a block. What I got here is a little block of Delrin. So I don't scar it up. And I loosen it up pretty much. Now that it's loose, I can kind of twist it and I'll pull the whole subassembly right out of the piston and uh, the body that holds the uh, jaws and the springs. Now this part right here should twist. And with your thumbs, you should be able to pop that out right there. I can use a couple of blocks of aluminum. I'm going to try. Usually I use air to get this, this piece. If I can set a couple pieces of aluminum down on the edge and push with my fingers, you can see the, the detail moved. Now with my hands, I can pull the sleeve off. With my thumbs, I push down and I can pop the central piece out. The, uh, I believe this here is the piston. This here is uh, the locking sleeve and the housing. And this here is a sleeve housing. Now I can remove all the O-rings from off around the side. It has an O-ring right here in the center for the piston to slide on. I kind of pick that out loose a little bit so that I can just hook it. And I'll set this off to the side. And I'll start with these O-rings. And I'll just get all the O-rings out. And I'll set that off to the side. There are no O-rings on the sleeve. Move these blocks out of the way. I'm back here in the box, and now <clears throat> we will do the piston. I'll take my thumbs and my fingers, and I can push the piston right through the housing. And now here on the piston, I have a glide ring. They use these for details that slide up a back and forth against each other. Just something to slide through. Now I'll get my pick under there and I'll just pull it out gently. Trying not to destroy it because if I have a kit I might have used one out of before, I, I might be able to reuse this in case of an emergency. And I'll set it off here to the side. And then I'll continue by taking off the O-rings. And just kind of pop the pick, get behind it, wiggle it around. This one's kind of a, a big, heavy-duty, thick O-ring there, the main seal. So it comes off a little bit harder. Now, this piece here has two flats. 
You see a flat on this side and a flat on this side. They're parallel for wrench to fit on it. And I will hold that right there and I should be able to loosen the nose. have to use a vise for this one. Hmm. Pretty stubborn. Step up here. Let's see if we can't get it to loosen. Got it. And it wants to slide off these flats. They're kind of small. There you go. for this one. Okay, if I can hold that under there. No, it wants to slide off of the wrench. Seems to be a little bit tighter. There it is. And that's your nose piece and your piston. I'll set these over here and I'll show you. How to change the jaws. The jaws have a a shoulder bolt. Doesn't seem to be marked here. Ah, oh, here it is. It's got an M4 by 16 shoulder bolt. Makes the jaws a little bit easier to, to change if you have to change a jaw. You just reach your Allen wrench into the pocket where the socket head is. Loosen it up. Now I've got them all loose, but I'm only going to take one off. Just unscrew it. 